Hey, BR Tidwell 55 once again. This is part three, XBMC on a netbook. Uh, in this series of videos, I've showed you how to set it up for remote administration, and I showed you how to set up file sharing so that you can actually put uh, videos into uh, onto your server. And now. Maybe I should have started with this, I don't know, but now we're going to actually install and configure XBMC. So, to install it, I've struggled with this, but I'm going to show you. You can install it through Syna uh, uh, Synaptic just as I've showed you on, uh, just, uh, just as I showed you how to do the. Uh, Type VNC and the XRDP client. Uh, this is another way to do things. Some say a little bit quicker, and you do it through the. Actually, you do it through the terminal. What you're going to do is you're going to do apt get. So, sudo that will give you. That means super user do. I'll let you do this with administrator privileges, which you need to install software. apt dash get install xbmc. Go ahead and put in your password. Contacting the package server and it's installing. A lot of people tell you to use the terminal because it's faster, and it is. And it's installed. Let's go see it. And it's going to be under your multimedia, and there it is. I'm going to go ahead and start it up. There'll be a quick break here, and uh, when it comes back, we'll actually be inside the XBMC window. Uh, what it's going to do? It's going to take up the whole screen, and for some reason, this virtual machine that I'm showing you how to do this on, I believe in truth and advertising. For some reason, I can't manipulate the cursor inside XBMC on a virtual machine the way I can on real hardware. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to reboot uh, to the uh, I'm going to reboot to a full Linux environment and show you how to administer XBMC running there. Principle still the same. So that's what this uh, little break is going to be all about. Stand by. Okay, we're back now. Uh, once XBMC starts up, uh, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is build your library. And because we started with movies, and this is for this video, I'm just going to the process is going to be the same for adding music to a library everything else. So, videos. Go ahead and click on files. Click on files again. Click add videos. What you're going to do is you're going to browse to that movies folder, or at least in this case, that I built. And remember that was under home and movies and you've got that selected so hit OK Home Brian Movies and your name for this media source well we'll just keep it easy we'll call it movies okay and this directory contains movies go ahead and hit yes And you can select that. 
All right. The programs that XBMC uses to give you all that GWiz video stuff, sometimes it doesn't recognize the titles, but you can go ahead and edit that so that it will. Go ahead and hit Moving Information. Just we'll go ahead and take that out. There's a lot of times when you back up your own videos, it'll come up like that. We'll leave it like that and see if we recognize it. Yep, the Avengers. Go ahead and select that. That looks like the right uh, poster. Uh, well, I didn't actually want to play that, but we'll go ahead and stop. Anyway, so now that we've uh, built our lo video library, We'll go home, and now it's added a new base menu, and that's your movies. Okay. Now, actually setting this up as a server. You're going to go to System. You're going to go to Settings. And go ahead and click on Services. And I'm not going to worry about... Uh, click... First of all, hit... UPnP and yes you want to share your libraries and you want to announce them and go ahead and hit this because what this does allow uh, control of XBMC if you got uh, like on your Android phone uh, or tablet you know I showed you that remote control app when you download that from the Play Store set it up to connect to your XBMC server and that's how you set up your remote web server you're gonna go ahead and uh, want to allow control through the web because then because uh, uh, the remote apps also work through the web interface don't ask me how you can leave these as defaults uh, remote control and go ahead and highlight that one this is all about en en enabling remote control and this is already highlighted. This will allow, say, on your Windows machine, uh, you go uh, you go to networking. This will make this show up as a uh, media device in Windows. AirPlay, I believe that is. A, a, I believe these are options if you have Apple devices, iPad, iPhone. Uh, so. I don't own any Apple devices. I don't mess with them. So, but I do know AirPlay is a, is an Apple protocol. An SMB client, you, you can set this up as a Win server or whatever. But you've already set up SMB through your through your base uh, in your base OS, so uh, you don't have to worry about that. you can change this to whatever uh, I call on my home network the one I've already got set up and that I showed you in the very first video I call that XBMC dash home server again it doesn't matter you can call it Fred you can call it John you can call it Jill you know turd muffin you know whatever it's just a name so and basically that's it actually no that's not it there's one more thing I'm going to want to do if you're going to set this up like I have see I have my netbook I have my netbook set up as a uh, it's connected to my big screen uh, with a VGA cable and through the the, the audio jack uh, for sound if you set it up like that and you just want to set it up leave it alone there's one more thing you're going to want to do and we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video right here and I'll show you that one last thing and uh, and we'll be done stand by okay so the last thing 
that you need to do and you can skip this step if you want to manually start uh, XBMC but I, I recommend uh, you know if this is just uh, set it up on your TV and and forget about it kind of thing uh, you're gonna want to add XBMC uh, as an auto start option uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to settings and then uh, scroll down to session and startup settings session and startup and uh, application auto start tab and you're gonna add an item call it anything you want I call it X BMC server. I'll go ahead and just put a dash in there. Description starts X BMC media. That doesn't really matter. And you're gonna look for the command. Now this command is gonna be it's gonna be in root. So go to file systems and I think it's gonna be under USR and BIN. Just give it a second while that pulls up. And it's going to be down toward the bottom. Because it is alphabetical. Oh, I saw it. Scroll back up. Okay. And you can see that's there in your auto start. So the next time you either shut down or you log off or log back in, XBMC is going to start. This is BR Tidwell 55. I hope that this helps someone and I hope you enjoyed it. You know, please feel free to leave a comment like or dislike, whatever you want. Well, BRTidwell55, and I am done.